done for the eye is come back in with a real light wash of the blue shading. Started at the back of the eye and worked my way up in the top cut coming around and then did the same on the bottom coming around just to give a light shading on the top and the bottom and then did my light placement of the pupil and then came back in after that it dried came back in with a darker blue with the shading and then when that dried came in and just added just a dab of the darker blue at, at the front you want to do it when it's dry that way it doesn't bleed out especially in a, such a small area such as the eye but that'll give you a good version of the eye and on the around the eye starting at the fold and coming back in with the shadow here and then on the eyelid that should give you a good eye what I'm doing now is putting in the eyebrow doesn't take a whole lot and as with the hair you don't want to do every little hair or it will not look too realistic just lightly doing it. and this is with a uh, canyon tan with a little bit of blue shading in it like this I just come in almost with the straight dark blue of the shading giving a couple of little dark passes the very tip of the brush and that will give us our eyebrow on the front part of the tablecloth I've used the same blue gray that I used up here in the shading on the top of the table I use here in a wash going across with a larger brush going through here and then also coming back making indentations to look try to make it look like the tablecloth was folded up at one time and then on the table legs I used a canyon tan right in through here and use the timber brown on the highlighted sides of the wood. Then I added to the canyon, canyon tan, I added the blue for the shading and just used a thin brush to go down the legs to add a little bit of wood grain and then also across the top as a little extra shading. And on the floor, what I did is I used the same green, the dark bluish green that we had had for the back wall I used on the floor started up here in the wash and then coming down toward the edge of the floor and then kept adding layers probably about four different layers up here and on the last layer I added the same blue from the tablecloth added it overall across the floor to add increasing on the shading what I've done so far is put down a red wash, did not dilute it very much from the bottle. And now I've added some of the dark green that we used for the back wall and just a little bit of the blue shading color that we used for the front of the tablecloth. And I'm coming in here and adding some of the shading on this cloth bundle. going up into our tool marks to accentuate them a little more and remembering that our lighting is coming from the upper left hand corner.
almost finished with the jug. And all I've done with the jug is used a canyon tan with a little bit of dark mahogany mixed in. Started with the light wash and I've been just going back over it in certain areas like this with the same wash. Added a little bit here and here, added a little bit of our shading dark blue in here and in here, and also in the cap area to add into the shading. And remembering our, our light source, getting a little bit of cast shadows here and on this area right into here and down at the base to give it some form to it. That way it's just not looking like a like an oval. It's make it look like it's a jug sitting out there on the floor. See if we can give it a little pattern. Using the same color I used for the vase jug. I think going in a different direction, it'll stand out a little bit. And I'll just do some X's. kind of faint. And that ought to finish the jug up. What I'm doing now is just applying water to get the leather damp so the dye that I'm adding now will bleed a little bit. Just give a different look to it. And the color I'm using is this the same green that I used over here, just watered down quite a bit. Being very careful as I go around the faces. What I'm doing, the same technique as I used for the other two walls with, since dye is very, the leather is very porous, it's real easy if you do straight lines like this and you keep going back over it, the lines will show, still show up. And what I do to counteract that is I just come in here and just dab repeatedly back in the areas and break up those lines. And from about a distance of about five to six feet from where most people normally view pictures from they won't be able to see the dab marks. They'll just see a texture on the wall. And it looks pretty good, especially from a distance. And I'll just fade it out as I go back toward the edge of the piece.
in the areas like this where I can't get in to with the big brush. I don't worry about it. I'll come back and get, get it with the same dye with a smaller brush in a little while. What I'm doing now is I come back with a wash. I add a little bit of red to it to give a darker green. And I'm just, with a smaller brush, I'm again just dabbing in the dye to give a different effect. It. And I'm just fading it out as I come back to the edge. Now that we have the walls done, we're going to come in and work on the ceiling. And I'm just going to come in here and put a light wash down. And this is the gray is just uh, the evening blue, a little bit of the emerald green, and just a little bit of the scarlet red mixed in there. And I'll just put down the wash first, and then we'll come back and put in the, the shadows. We have the wash, and I'm gonna come back in with the shading. And since the light's coming from my right, this point I'm going to just come on the other, the left side of these beams, and put in a brush width, just about a half inch width on the shading here. like a cast shadow from those beams. With being a wash, you'll probably have to come back a couple of times to get it as dark as you want it. 